So obvious. we're talking about people we're, who... But we're talking within our community, yeah. people, um, that, you know, the, the, their strategy is not bringing benefit. Mm. And we've got to recognise that. Or maybe that. not bringing a short-term benefit. Maybe they're no, in no, it for it the short, no, no, there's no short-term or long-term benefit. If you Can play you it out... an example of okay, so strategy? If, so if you, pl- if you play it out, when you compromise to get seat around the table with power... What does okay. compromise here mean? Compromise being here that you will uh, uh, do the bidding of uh, the power. So, for example, condemn certain things that got nothing to do with you because the power wants you to do that. Get rid of someone from your organisation because uh, mm. the power doesn't like him or her, right? And you do that. Or work but with prevent or something. Yeah, you know, you compromise on cer- certain things that you know that are harmful, that are wrong. You feel it in your mm-hmm. body, right? You know you're doing it wrong. Anyway, you do all of that stuff and you get your seat around the table. And you're, and you're happy, and, and then you're doing some, some stuff maybe. As soon as the power's not happy with you, it just discards you. Yeah. Right? And, and, and we've seen it happening uh, many, many times. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to this post election special Islam 21C unscripted podcast. Um, if you're living in the UK or if you're living anywhere else and not under a rock somewhere, you'll realize that. We had a general election in the UK uh, last week now, and as of rec- at the time of recording today, the new MPs are being uh, introduced to each other and sworn into Parliament uh, as we're recording this. Uh, to discuss the election results and uh, to discuss the way forward for uh, the Muslim community, I have uh, two, mashallah, heavyweights uh, in the British Muslim scene. Um, before anyone complains, uh, understandably, it's kind of Southeast-centric, uh, the Muslim Ummah is in the UK is wider than London, but we have nonetheless two very uh, dear uh, special guests uh, to me. On my right, we have the right honorable, honorable gentleman, uh, Imam Shaquille Beg from Lewisham Islamic Centre. Assalamu alaikum, Imam Sahib. Wa alaikum salam wa Great to have you back. Uh, and we have to my left, uh, not to uh, say anything about his political leanings or anything, we have uh, Azad Ali, the Editor of Five Pillars. <laughs> that was a joke, by the way. He's uh, one what, one. What, yeah. What are you now? <laughs> one one. What are you nowadays? You are the community. Let me get to try and get this. You're the community director for Cage. Director for Cage. I was about to say that. And uh, generally, you know, a nice guy. Mashallah. He's uh, he's been uh, active in the Muslim community scene for many mm. a decade. I won't. Um, I won't say uh, how many, but uh, Zakma Khairan for, for uh, attending, for joining. Um, where were you uh, on the night of this of the twelfth of December? Where physically? Yeah. Um, Not that you're accused of anything, but uh, <laughs> I ho- at home and I yeah. have an alibi. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I, I, to be honest, I didn't watch it. Um, yeah. The results. I had a feeling um, it was going a little bit sour. Yeah. Friday the thirteenth really came. And <laughs> it wasn't Freddie who returned; it was <laughs> Boris. <laughs> so um, yeah, no, I was at home. I didn't really watch it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, were you really surprised by the exit polls? I was shocked. Yeah, but I was shocked in as well in just in the sense that the numbers, the margins. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a feeling it would be close, probably that. But the Tories would get it. But I didn't realize there's going to be yeah. that much of a margin. Yeah. How about Lewisham? Did you guys get your... Uh, we were in yeah. the masjid, I was in the masjid until late, but uh, as, as you I you have an election result special? No, no, but we were <laughs> waiting in terms of, I mean, people were saying yeah. in the evening, look, this is what it looks looks like. And in honesty, didn't expect it to be mm. this this bad. Mm. You know, there was kind of like a hope it's going to be yeah, yeah much yeah. better than how it was. It's what about your um, local MP, the... Um, who, who got in in your local area? All the local Labour MPs were reinstated. Yeah. They all okay. won. Yeah. Lucian generally been a yeah. Labour. L- London one. generally did well for yeah. Labour. Yeah. yeah. Um. They said that that was uh, maybe perhaps a problem during the campaigning that they. Well, I mean, it's easy hindsight kind of bias, but they um, they said that they were taking the, the the northern seats for granted. You know, the diehard Labour kind of. Yeah, now hindsight is a wonderful yeah. thing, isn't it? Um, everyone likes to uh, mm. build on it, and everyone's an expert after the event. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but I think there are lessons to be learned. I think um, I think the messaging. Uh, I think to be fair, Labour um, underestimated the frustrations of Brexit. Mm. I think you know they, a lot of people, and their strategies probably didn't believe people were that frustrated that they will cut their nose to spite their face. That 
you know, traditional Labour supporters would actually vote for Brexit, which meant a Tory candidate or a Brexit party candidate. So I think um, there was a huge underestimation for that. And it was the writing was on the wall. The whole election was called on the back of Brexit. Yeah. Um, if you remember, <coughs> Boris tried to shut down Parliament for over a month. Mm. Um, it was wrong to be illegal. Yeah. And, and his line was, look, they're not letting me do Brexit. Mm. So I'm going to call an election, and if you, the public, give me the mandate, I'll get it done. He so said, I mean, that that was a very um, kind of a made-to-stick campaign slogan, get Brexit done, and they, they said that he repeated that literally thousands of times in hundreds of different interviews yeah, yeah. throughout the last few weeks. Mm. Um, but Labour's, you know, or everyone else's, they were kind of not as incessant. It's annoying when you're listening to it, but it gets into people's subconscious, yeah, and, and I guess. And I think that's the big difference between <coughs> the cities... Yeah. especially like London and, and other big cities and, uh, if you like, the rural, rural areas. Um, in, in the metropolitan areas, if you like, uh, people are a little bit more nuanced. Uh, mm. Brexit isn't the be-all and end-all for them. There, there are other concerns, whether it's transport, health or whatever, education. Um, but in the rural areas, especially where they did vote to leave, um, nothing else mattered. The only mm. thing that mattered is getting Brexit done. <coughs> and they, um, the strategies at the Tory party, they played to that uh, very successfully. Yeah. I think, uh, do you think the media played a big part in this, in kind of like targeting? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Mm. I, I think, you know, if you, if you look at all the major newspapers, <coughs> and even the BBC, and we really need to uh, decriminalise not paying the BBC fee, uh, mm. uh, were very much pro-messaging uh, on uh, the Tory party. Um, but, you know... If you remember the night before the election, um, Boris hid in the fridge. <laughs> now, <coughs> I was actually talking to someone and I was saying, if you're going to stand as the prime minister of the next of this country, like why would you hide in a fridge? Like what would possess you to hide in the fridge? And you know, like you're laughing, but yeah. most people just laughed it off. Oh, look, see, look at that idiot, look at the clown and all of that stuff. But it said something about his confidence. Yeah. It doesn't matter. <coughs> like, I can do whatever I like. I can say whatever I like. I can do whatever I like. And you've got nothing on me. Do you see? And, and to be fair, on the media, all of the media covered him hiding on the fridge. Yeah. But nobody cared. It made no difference. Uh, well, it made a difference. It might have, uh, might have um, played to you know, the, the, the anti-Tory sentiment already, but in the seats where it actually mattered... They all they could care about was those three words: get Brexit done, get Brexit mm. done. Mm. And but do you think uh, I think in, they, in yeah. terms of the Muslim community, <coughs> did they play their part? That's a good question. But I think before we answer that question, we need a reality check. Um, I, I was quite disappointed in some of the messaging uh, from the different Muslim organisations, um, which was you know to the point where it was almost it tried to it came across anyway to me that if the Muslim community did not uh, engage in this election, it's going to be a disaster and it's going to be their fault. And, you know, everything hangs on the Muslim vote. It, you kind of, the messaging drove uh, to that uh, mm -hmm. level. What? Do you disagree many, with that? Do you disagree I with that? I totally disagree with that. The reason being, <clears throat> the key seats where if you wanted to change a government, the Muslims are not the majority. Yeah. That's one thing. <coughs> Second thing is those messaging... And all those messages were not reaching to those areas. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if you take where I am, uh, my MP, Labour MP, her, her majority is over 20,000. Okay? Now, whether someone votes here or not isn't really going to make a big difference. But all the action is here. Everyone's campaigning here. Everyone's doing everything here. You had Muslims doing hustings in safe Labour seats. Mm -hmm. Like, for what? I mean, they, they, they were Labour supporters, but why would you do a hustings in a safe Labour seat? What, what are you getting out There's of There's no, no such thing really as a truly safe seat, though. Of course there is. I mean, there is. That you, if you take it for granted, if, if enough people take it for granted, then it won't be a safe seat anymore. Yeah, but that, we're, we're not there. Uh, yeah. We're not there. I mean, look, for example, Una King in this seat, in uh, mm -hmm. Poplar, uh, Bethnal Green and Bow, rather, uh, she uh, had a majority of over 15,000. She voted mm -hmm. for the Iraq war. The community were not happy. Mm -hmm. Uh, they voted her out, yeah. right? Overturned a 15,000 majority. So it's doable, I get yeah. that. But this is an exception. So I think the first thing is, look, I think 
So are there Muslims in those areas where they could have a an impact on the the outcome of the election, the government? In in some seats, and but, do you think? But as a minority, but as a minority, we don't have enough to win mm. or lose an election for anyone. Mm. This is the important p- yeah. because look, you have to be a realist. Otherwise, what you're doing is, especially if you're an activist or a leader in the community, and, I, yeah. and I'll put that in, in, in inverted commas if community you like. Leader. Um, you're you're almost giving hope, so much hope to the community, uh, only for mm. them to fail, and they, they they will never achieve it. So it's it's better to be honest and upfront and build yeah. slowly. But I do think, you think uh, in terms of <coughs> for the future, I mean, Muslim leadership. Uh, creating a mindset within the Muslim community, you need to be politically active. So in the past, let's say, decade or two, you know, there's been kind of like lack of political activity and participation. So rather than say, look, don't get involved, don't do no hustings, at least give them that kind yeah. of like hope and be active. So years to come, five, ten years, with more activity, more participation, mm-hmm. get, getting more wiser, things can be a bit more positive. But to yeah. say, look, you know what, <coughs> don't be involved, don't do much. No, no, I'm, I'm not coming from that. Uh, yeah, I'm not coming from that at no. all. Uh, of course, we should engage. We should engage on uh, our yeah. terms. Your email address still says get on vote. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there you go. So it's not it's not that I don't be- believe in engaging. You do engage, but you've got to engage, yeah. uh, you know, with, with a strategy. I think you mentioned terms. once, don't water mango trees expecting bananas. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that, like that. This, mm. it's, it's, it's that I'm trying yeah. to get to. And I think... Over the years, yes, there's been an improvement. I think mm-hmm. there are far more Muslims that do engage than disengage. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that's there. And it, it needs to increase. But I think also we need to be uh, aware of uh, our limitations and do things that are sensible and winnable. Like So, for example, there are probably... Uh, uh, let's take one seat, for example, in Berry, to both, both of the seats in Berry. One of them, uh, the Conservatives won by 100 votes. <coughs> okay. Wow. Now there is a a, a a sizable Muslim community there, but the isn't uh, that where the Darul Loom is famous Darul Loom? There you go. So mm. there is, but if if you look at the activity on the ground in that area, mm. it wasn't there wasn't any. Mm-hmm. As a last minute hosting organized, it was, it was organized in a very disorganized way. Um, it didn't affect anything, but the homework wasn't done. Mm. That's one thing. But I think then looking at the whole political act activism, if you like. We also gave the message, and that's the second disappointment I had, is that the elections voting is be all and end all. Mm. That that is politics. This is, like I saw messages, this is the single biggest uh, event in, in, in a generation for Muslims, this, that and the other. Mm. And I was thinking, why, why are you doing that? Because you're, you're misleading people. Uh, voting is one aspect of the whole mm. political uh, process. There are so many other aspects of the political process that... We we need to yeah. uh, really engage in, and that's, that's one of the one of the things I wanted to talk about today. And that because all of us were encouraging at, during election time to get out and vote, but a lot of people were saying, "Well, why do you why are you just talking about elections?" You know, mm. um, it makes sense to do that during election time because it's election time. You know, the sunnah al waqt, as they say. You know, yeah. when it's time yeah. for salah, you pray. You talk about praying. If it's time for zakah, you talk about zakah. So that was time for election. We were encouraging people to get out and vote and organize hustings and all that kind of stuff. Now the elections are over. What is your message for the Muslim community? You know, um, what was your, for example, what was your khutbah on Friday the thirteenth? <laughs> I mean, as just one point in terms of uh, what as I was mentioning, I think maybe slightly differ with your kind of like uh, take on it in terms of, you know, they looked at the election. They looked at. You know, the manifesto of the different parties and, you know, foreign policy, Philistine, mm-hmm. Palestine, mm-hmm. what's happening in Yemen. Mm-hmm. You know, it touched a lot of sentiments with the Muslim community, a large, <coughs> you know, mm-hmm. majority of the Muslim community being working class. So student fees, mm-hmm. NHS, yeah. housing, that kind of like touched with them. So I think it was more to do with, look, this is better overall for the Muslim community and for the masses as well. Mm. So that was the perception in terms mm-hmm. of pushing that kind of like, look, it is an important election. Mm-hmm. And I mm-hmm. think long term, it's important to have that kind of like, not to say, look, this is the only way of achieving change and positivity, but it is an important part, yeah. and especially for our youngsters, mm. generations to come. Mm. We're part of the society, part of community. They need to understand this is a way of engaging yeah. and changing. Make effort in it. But of course, as you mentioned, it's not the mm. you know, only the thing. Be to, uh, but yeah, it was, yeah. they say, a lot of people are saying the election of a generation. Mm. No, no. It's a, I mean, I'm not disagreeing with anything you've just said. Mm. Um, uh, if I, I'm probably I'm not being clear, um, 
what 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 the focus should be like you said when it's election time everyone's going to be talking about voting mm -hmm. register to vote vote you know etc mm. makes sense but what about the rest of the time what about so we had another general election in 2017 two years yeah. ago from 2017 <coughs> to before the election was announced name me people organizations whoever in the community was talking about uh, politics and especially um being involved in the parties that make the parliamentary candidate yeah. or decide the parliamentary candidate so we, we so we, we as a community than a, than yeah, than yeah we, we get sidetracked and manipulated too easily like mm. so you know look since 2017 there, there is a uh, a rise in populism all mm. across the mm. western hemisphere right uh, you, you see it in america you see it in europe and you're seeing it here so mm. there there is that that is the reality that's happening so islamophobia is a big issue for mm -hmm. the Muslim community. Mm -hmm. So that's that's being discussed and, and things like that. But in terms of building your strength, building your power, where is, like, okay, you were talking about Palestine, for example. Mm -hmm. Palestine is not a, a simple issue that's going to be resolved overnight. Mm -hmm. The Labour Party took a position on it, which was what? That they will recognise mm -hmm. an independent Palestinian state. Okay, Did anyone actually examine what that means? Like mm -hmm. just recognizing <coughs> Palestine as an independent state, yeah, it sounds yeah. good. And so, but really, what does it change? It yeah. doesn't really change anything. Mm -hmm. Okay, that, that's so. It's easy to kind of get certain things, but we've got to understand. Okay, what are those things? Are they really truly beneficial for our community? Look at the uh, Conservatives' uh, uh, pledge on uh, Palestine. What did they say? They said, if we come into power, we're going to ban BDS. Mm. Right, so you can't boycott, uh, divest, uh, and and have sanctions against I Israel for the uh, human rights uh, violations and atrocities and and killings that it's doing. You can't do that. Mm -hmm. Very specific, very yeah. clear, very beneficial for the yeah. Zionist uh, entity. Yeah, but look what what the Palestinians got. It was just a, a tokenistic uh, mm -hmm. gesture. So we got to be we got to understand these things now. Yeah. To understand mm -hmm. these things, you need. We have, mashallah, a lot of talented uh, people in our community. Mm -hmm. A lot of educated, uh, knowledgeable, and, and they know how to uh, kind of create policies and understand all of this stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. Where was that thought process? Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm saying. We, gotta, we have yeah. to up our game. Mm -hmm. And the only way we can up our game is if we operate on our basis, not be led. <coughs> a lot of these parties, in particular the Labour Party, it leads the community down a certain path mm -hmm. with socialism or whatever you know equality all of these kind of arguments but what we don't realize is that we're being led into a rabbit hole so rather we should be doing the leading ourselves so, who's, so what do you who's, mean by that then by, by that i mean muslim, we should have a think uh, muslim tank. parliament no we should have a think tank for example mm -hmm. a, a a maybe not just one a few where people actually come together research and put a position or come up with a position or a policy outcome mm -hmm. that they would see as beneficial to the Muslim community and obviously the wider community as well and kind of build that up into policy right and and then kind of lobby the political parties yep. uh, to adopt it now that needs to happen do you need a think tank to do that or what about who, who um, else can going to do that well you have campaigning organizations like cage like men no, for uh, example well, no i don't think i don't think a campaigning organization can do this because it's easy to come to uh, a, a a sentence of this is what we need yeah. but just changing that sentence into an entire policy is very different you have to have mm. that done now if you look at think tanks that work with the labor party or the conservative parties and others they don't just publish a report they develop it to a point where they can show you how yeah. you can then make this into a policy Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so we've got to also operate on those bases But overall, I don't want to sound <coughs> you know, all do doom and gloom yeah. and everything else Overall, look, the, the, as a community, we are a young community okay? We've been in this country, what, 70 years, 80 years maybe uh, mm -hmm. Maybe a little bit less So we, we are learning and we, we are going to grow But I think it's, it's high time that we don't fall for the party <coughs> politics you know so uh, i think your point is that in terms of y you know moving forward think tank and so on and having those discussions and you know qualified youngsters leading those discussions but i think the election just going back to that i think the way i see it is as a positive mm -hmm. muslims engaging muslims being vocal muslims saying it's important mm -hmm. that's another step in the right direction yeah from there yeah. where can we go the next discussion starts so guys sorry to butt in hey 
But if you're enjoying this podcast, please head over to islam2nc.com forward slash donate to help us make more. And if you're not enjoying it, head over anyway and help us make better ones. Because in order to implement what you said, you need to have what you're saying. You need to have uh, the sentiment that, you know what, Muslim and Islam belongs here. We should be... We should be, um, you know, making our mark. We should be laying roots here. I'll give you a, a, here, an, so. an, an, a, another good example. After the uh, election, um, there's been a lot of report of uh, Islamophobic incidences. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, you know, so, so someone after the election. After the election, okay. now, yes, they, these things happen. I'm not denying they didn't happen. But you've got a question: Why is the media pushing this? All right, it pushed it on Friday. Uh, Friday probably <coughs> late afternoon. Then Saturday I saw some stories. Sunday I saw st- uh, Sunday I saw some stories, and then Sunday night or Monday I can't remember exactly. I think it was Sunday. Mm-hmm. Uh, I saw a story saying I'm leaving the UK. Uh, I'm, I'm so scared I'm yeah. leaving the UK. Now that's an, an engineered position. What what is the benefit of that, and why are Muslims falling into that trap? Similar that doesn't mean that doesn't mean there are people genuinely fear. If you're fearful, you're fearful. But that isn't that is a very disempowering message. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you were talking about positivities from the elections. This ain't positivity. This is yeah. like Armageddon. Oh my God! You know, mm. I need to leave this country. Mm. When I saw that, the thing that I was thinking was, it's a terrible message for the Muslims, but it's a fantastic threat and and a political tool to use no, against. Not at all. Because this most is of the exa- country want you to exa- leave. Exactly. No, no. But if the, you believe the exactly populism. the same thing that was echoed by some people, they're in the not Jewish our teachers. Community. They are not our teachers. To they are not them, our teachers. Then but why, why, why you even mention that as an example? Because it can be used no. as as they a, are not an our teachers so ever. To, to who, who look who are at you referring to uh, the Jewish community uh, mm. uh, example of the during the election. Uh, oh, okay. There were some newspaper stories. They were saying we're going to leave if Corbyn becomes prime minister. We're going to leave. The point is that can be used. To create a broader narrative to force the the opponent into some position, they're, they're I not, agree. It's it's hugely uh, disempowering, and we shouldn't be. But sp- do, do you think? That do you think it's lo- looking from the other perspective, and, and that's one. Th- sometimes mm. the blame we put on the other, by the other I mean uh, the non-Muslim, yeah. you mm-hmm. know, uh, community members and so on, and the wider population. But do you think? There is that perception from the Mus- that disempowerment is coming from Muslims too. Yeah, yeah, no, no, it's from yeah. Muslims. That's mm. what I'm saying. The, so you a know, Muslim, when you I think it was a Muslim who wrote in the Metro, or somebody mm. wrote about him that, you know, I'm gonna, my, I'm fearful for my life mm. because Tories got in and that. Yeah, kind yeah. Of stuff. I'm gonna I'm leave. I'm gonna leave. I'm basically. gonna leave. Yeah, and and so like I said, I mean, it's a terrible message for our community, yeah. but it needs that 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 sentiment needs to be highlighted to someone. Mm-hmm. Right. No, to, no, to you try can and show that there's a, you can highlight there's a, a problem sentiment. that Muslims, you can highlight uh, a sentiment Muslims feel. Which is Islamophobia is increasing yeah. right? Mm-hmm. You can highlight that sympathy uh, mm-hmm. Sentiment You can highlight that people are fearful mm-hmm. uh, That people are, are, are mm-hmm. you know They want to leave That's how bad it has got to mm-hmm. right? You can highlight all these yeah, things I mean, Without that, saying I don't think, that I don't think mm-hmm. we should highlight it amongst the community But it should be highlighted to some segments that you know, these That's there are people that need yeah. that are feeling the uh, second point on this is it's not a reflection on reality. Mm-hmm. Most Muslims will not leave. Yeah, okay, true. there is there is <laughs> no what they do with yeah. the with with well. all of the you know doom and gloom that you'd like yeah. to throw on Britain. There's countries far worse than this. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I, I think you know. We'd, and that's why I say yeah. they're not our teachers. We mm. should not use examples. We should not use tactics and strategies that do not come from our deen. This is not so from it's crime wolf. Yeah, just on that point, in terms of, you know, the like the desire to go, and as you mentioned, most will not. But the perception, I think, of look, where is home? That's mm. that's very very important. Mm. You might not leave because you know it's better than most places, as you mentioned, but it's not home. Yes. When that understanding is not there, then people don't work for positive change. And so there's two, two things to that. One is you have the right-wing racist Islamophobes pushing that message. This ain't your home. This ain't your home. Go back. Go back. Mm-hmm. Right? You've got go that messaging going Islamabad. on. And then you've got some that are accepting it and thinking, okay, this isn't my home. Mm-hmm. So you, you, you've got to tackle both problems. Mm-hmm. Okay? Now, within our community, I think it's fair to say we're on third-generation Muslims now. Yeah, <clears throat> Most, if not all, of the third-generation Muslims will only see the UK as their home. They were, th- their fathers were probably born here Their parents were probably born here um, And they're born here They don't really have a home Most of them can't speak the language of their grandparents That's where they're at So there isn't that, 
that confusion amongst them. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. is being placed on them. And then within our community, people are saying, look, this ain't a place for us, we need to go. Mm-hmm. So we need to tackle I both. don't think that that is a sentiment that is very widespread anymore than amongst younger people. It's not. Now, that's what yeah. I'm saying. It's not. So m- most young people mm-hmm. see this as their home. I don't think that yeah. uh, is, is uh, an but issue. They, the identity they, issue is more like when you say this is your home, how do you then recognize yourself? What is you your feel identity? That, so I think one you know, thing to the say, Arabs are they're saying, yeah. Lisan al-hal wa lisan al-maqal. <coughs> they might not say in speech, but it's your attitude okay. mm. about the environment your action. you're in. Your action. Mm. Your actions speak louder than words. Okay, maybe I don't want to make this, let's say, it's, it's, you know, migrate, make hijrah. I want to work in Saudi Arabia. I want to work in Qatar. Yeah. I want to go away. That is still there. Pakistan. Or Pakistan, yeah. I think some people do it for economic reasons as well. I don't yeah. think it's all yeah. um, just for this. But look, I, th- I think what, what, what I'm trying to get to is like we do have uh, a lot more confident uh, Muslims. We have Muslims that feel this is their home. Uh, and Muslims that are willing to uh, struggle against uh, the uh, rise of Islamophobia and, and hate. So I think it's one that's thing a positive thing we need to embrace. Mm-hmm. I think it's one thing to call mu- this your home and another thing to feel that Islam belongs here. And you know, if you if you if you're because a, Muslim, a lot of us a lot of us feel have this um, kind of double consciousness almost that you have a bubble for your masjid and Islamic work, and you have a, have a bubble for your you know um, work and study and that kind of stuff. And partly, I think that is because there's a of a of a distinction between how Islam has been spoken about mm-hmm. on the mimbars for many years, on the pulpits, and how Islam mm. actually is lived yeah. in practice. That's, I mean, yeah. the war on terror, if we, if if I can bring that in, um, mm. has definitely had this effect where Muslims are less and less likely to identify and project their Islamic identity. Mm. Um, than uh, more perhaps a secularized one. Yeah, that's that's that is definitely it. and that is so. You've got programs like Prevent yeah. uh, and other things that you know are targeting Muslims, mm-hmm. uh, and and so what, what what happens is when Muslims feel targeted, many of them think, okay, you know what, I don't want to you know get into any trouble. I don't need the headache. I don't need the hassle. I just you know not do this, not do this, and then you have that change happening. Imam Shikur, mm-hmm. do you think that's that's partly maybe due to some kind of um, maybe I don't want to say mistakes, but uh, maybe a, a overlooking some important things or, and, and deficiencies when it comes to imams and masjids and, and khutbah khatibs and stuff like that. Yeah, most definitely. And I, you know, sometimes we discussions between imams. Mm. So sometimes we like to blame, <coughs> let's say, others. It's not us. Yeah. It's other imams or organizations or ulama from abroad and so on. But I think we are part of that problem. Mm. You know, and that perception of where is home. What is our duty? Does Islam belong here? And, and that's a very important mm. point that you mentioned. It's deeper than just, okay, this is home. Mm. No, deen belongs here. Mm. People deserve deen. They deserve Islam. Mm. They need Islam. That perception, you know, that needs to be created in ourselves, firstly. Mm. And I think also important in terms of the Islamophobia, as I, that you mentioned, the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his home was Mecca. Mm. What happened to him in Mecca? Mm. There was a time his own people, well, how did they treat him? Mm. Even his... Sub clan, yeah. non Muslims from sub clan were mistreated and taken out of Makkah. They re- on the outskirts of Makkah. Mm. It didn't make him say, "Look, mm. it's not my home. Mm. It's not my people." Still, he he knew mm. they they need the message. Yeah, and I think that approach is very very important. One of the problems uh, I think Sheikh Haytham mentioned uh, we've been talking about a while from Islam Trinity is is not to compare us to Abyssinia, mm-hmm. the the migrants who went to Abyssinia because it's it's a metaphor, it's an, an analogy often used, but it gets it kind of um, implies a very maybe negative um, implication that is the second the class. The Mus- uh, not only that, but mm. the Muslims in Abyssinia were there as guests. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know that wasn't their home. They mm. went there temporarily, mm-hmm. and they were going somewhere back home. Mm. And if you're any, you know, if you're a guest, it's not part of being a gracious guest I, to I, demand your rights and you yeah, know, no, I think change look, the place. That, that's yeah. um, but that mm. I I I, I, well, I understand. Why the Sheikh is saying that, um, but you got to understand. Initially, the people that came here were yeah. of that mindset that I'm only here for the money. Once I've made enough money, I'm going to go back. So I'm taking some yeah, money back. Yeah, that's it. That's that. That's, so it, they did yeah. uh, have that thing, and then when they brought their wives over, they still kind of uh, had that thing. Then when they had children, they were like still building homes back home and things like that. So you you had a 
I would say at least 30, 40 years off that. Yeah. Um, so I think it's important that we don't mm. dismiss that because that plays a large part in yeah. the psyche yeah, of the yeah. second yeah. and third generations. Yeah. Yeah. Going, going back to Salman's point in terms of scholarship of that era and time and imams, what was the message they were giving? Mm. What was the scholarship and the teaching that they were presenting to the people? If it was, as you was mentioning, okay, you're here, make your money, go back. Was that right? Mm, yeah. And that, of course, played a part in the mindset of the people that mm. were listening to them and so on. Mm. So that's important for it. In, that in your experience, is that, is that still um, a message from the members that's being kind of portrayed? Uh, it's changed, as, as I mentioned. You know, third generation, fourth generation has changed. Imams are now younger. Imams are born here, you know, and, and many. So I think, mm. yeah, that, that narrative has changed. I think what I was going to say is we're forgetting our primary duty as Muslims. And I think that's what can change people's identity and belo- belonging. Our primary duty is to pass the message of Islam. Mm-hmm. And, and, and if we really truly embrace that, then mm-hmm. we, should, we would make this our home to do that. Just simply that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and everything else we will be patient with. Mm-hmm. So I think you know, we need to revitalize uh, th- this kind of messaging um, you know, f- from, from the pulpits, but just, just everywhere. That, and the second thing is we've got to come at this from an Islamic point of view as Muslims always with our own uh, do's and don'ts. Mm-hmm. You know, the, 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 I have this uh, uh, really... Uh, Pet peeve. Uh, yeah, about people rushing to grab the low-hanging fruits mm-hmm. because the low-hanging fruits always come with compromise. People rushing mm-hmm. to... Uh, you know what? If we get a seat around the table, then we can make the change. But they don't it's usually realize. A very long table. Well, it's a long <laughs> table. But by the time you get to the table, you're not the same guy that you yeah. started off as um, because you've you've had that many low hanging fruits. So I think it's important that we develop people uh, and we develop our th- third, fourth generation Muslims who are engaging with that confidence. Yeah. First, in, in their identity as Muslims and, and everything else, and second that they, they are primary here to pass the message of the deen. Third, that they care about the community that they live in. Okay? Uh, it shouldn't be, uh, our concern shouldn't be just the Muslim issues. It should be for our communities, our neighbours and everything else. Yeah. Okay? So that we all are living in harmony. Everyone's uh, being treated well. Everyone has an opportunity. Everyone has you know, all, all the right things that they should do in a society. Mm-hmm. Those things should be our... When it comes from a genuine uh, belief, people can see that. Like, yeah. oh, you know what, he genuinely cares, uh, you know, because I've been seeing him doing it without any press releases or media things. The guy's just been doing, like, yeah, there are some brothers I know and some organisations that have been doing soup kitchens for at least 10, 15 years now. Mm-hmm. Some of these you, you've never even heard of. They've yeah. just been doing it. Why? Because they genuinely care about those poor people who uh, are the homeless people who, who've got no food. They're just doing it. There are no, mm. you, you don't know. They're not winning any awards or anything else. Mm. So we've got to stop falling into these kind of uh, traps where people, you know, they can see that you're, you're not really that genuine. You've got your one foot somewhere else yeah. or your one eye somewhere else. Are you so doing it for the Kodak moment? Maybe. <laughs> maybe that's well, it. I just want to touch on, yeah. uh, just no, remind me, the, the point about engagement later on maybe. But I think the, you know, what's our kind of like main message, initial, yeah. uh, you know, the message that we, should, we need to have. And I think, uh, you know, he, he touched on it. And it reminded me of the hadith of the Prophet where he mentioned my similitude of a man who lights a fly, fire mm-hmm. and flies and moths are rushing towards the fire and the man is vigorously trying to stop them from falling into the fire. Mm-hmm. And the similitude is that people are rushing towards hellfire, Jahannam, mm-hmm. and he is trying to f- mm-hmm. stop them from falling into hellfire. Mm-hmm. That kind of passion and care exactly. that is needed, mm-hmm. uh, you know, a sincere kind of like desire, mm-hmm. look, they yeah. need deen. It has to be from the heart. I think yeah. that's very, very important. Yeah. I think the point of engagement, uh, as that in terms of, because I, you know, I'm, I'm very, how do you say, keen on Muslim unity, mm. and I think that's a a focus that we need in terms of after the elections, Muslim unity discussions, engagement within ourselves yeah. to have a direction. And I think about the, you know, the example you gave about sitting on the table. Do you think it's more of a question and a comment at the same time? that we need to now maybe tolerate differences in terms of strategy? We should always tolerate differences, mm. but we shouldn't tolerate <coughs> things that are bringing harm. And, and this is the point. So it's, it's, it's like, you know... But nobody's going you, to when you, when actively you, do something that they believe no, is bringing harm. No, they're not, not knowingly. Yeah. But 
sincerely, you can also make mistakes. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's the job of those people who are seeing those mistakes to call people and say, look, you know, this is a mistake, don't do this. Um, if, if, for example, your, your approach is that, look, um, we'll try to be as palatable as possible, we'll try to fit in as possible. Broad church. Uh, you know, we'll do all of these things at first. Then <coughs> by the time you get into that broad church, mm. your identity is watered down so much that it's not even visible anymore. And that's fine for the people who you want you around the table. Keep in mind that people also, you know, in character they differ. Some people's character is that way inclined. Yeah. You know, a bit more accommodating, a bit more accepting. Others aren't. Social factors also. The right. character we should focus on is the Prophet, <laughs> right? Mm. His character was accommodating, mm. but he didn't mm. compromise on these certain but things. There are personality mm. differences too, right? Yeah, yeah, I, I mean, think that's important. There's yeah. the, you know, some people, the, the kind of, as long as they're not actively like, you know, Quilliam types. There's that kind of thing on the extreme, mm. and this then there's the no, no, complete no. The, kind the, of the isolation. I mean, the Quillian types are yeah. they they are working against the community. Yeah. That's that's so we're talking about people. We're, who well, we're talking within our community. Yeah. People, yeah. Um, that you know, the, the, their strategy is not bringing benefit, mm. and we got to recognize that. Or maybe that. you're not bringing a short term benefit. Maybe they no, no, it, the it short, no, no. There's no short term or mm. long term benefit. So if you can play you give it an out, example of okay, that so strategy. If, so if you pl- if you play it out. When you compromise to get seat around the table with power, what does okay. compromise here mean? Compromise mean here that you will uh, uh, do the bidding of uh, the power. So, for example, condemn certain things that got nothing to do with you because the power wants you to do that. Get rid of someone from your organisation because uh, mm-hmm. the power doesn't like him or her, right? And you do that, or work with prevent or something. Yeah, you know, you compromise on cer- certain things that you know that are harmful, that are wrong. You feel it in your Mm-hmm. Body, right? You know you're doing it wrong. Anyway, you do all of that stuff, and you get your seat around the table, mm-hmm. and you're and you're happy, and and then you're doing some some stuff. Maybe as soon as the power's not happy with you, it just discards you. Yeah. Right. And 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 we've seen it happening uh, many many times. Mm-hmm. Now, if you carry on with unless that model, you, um, unless you fight back on Twitter and gain a massive it, following, it, it, <laughs> yeah. But Twitter, so that's another problem. Don't live in uh, <coughs> uh, uh, you know social yeah. media. Life doesn't. Like, yeah. Funny thing, I just sidetrack a little bit. I was uh, following the trends on Twitter on uh, election day. Yeah. And I actually tweeted, uh, and I looked at all the trends. All the trends, top five or six, were all pro-Labour. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I tweeted, I said, if tri- Twitter was yeah. the arbiter, the Labour would have won this election. But it's not. Yeah. Look how wrong it was. So l- l- let's not go yeah. into that. So when you keep compromising like this, you don't make any uh, progress. What mm-hmm. you do is you, you tell power that you're willing to do whatever to mm-hmm. get a seat around the table. Now... When you take a different approach, which is that you approach with your principles, the cage okay? approach. Yeah, you could say the cage <laughs> approach, but I was going to say Marshall. like uh, I was going to just bring it to myself. I don't, yeah. don't want to talk about uh, cage Ali approach. Right. So, like for example, <laughs> let's take a very contentious issue, yeah. which is uh, homosexuality. Okay. Yeah. So, from an Islamic point of view, <coughs> we know that it's 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 a, it's a sin in our religion. We can't promote it. We can't do it, all of that kind of stuff. Right. So there is a, a clear line from a, a religious point of view. Now, I've been working with a lot of people... You mean same-sex relationships? Uh, same-sex relationship. I've been mm-hmm. working with many people who are gay. Mm-hmm. Um, and they've never had a problem with me. I've never been called a homophobe. Why? Because I've explained that, you know what? Look, we can work together. There's something that, like, for example, challenge racism or Islamophobia or whatever it is. We can work together, but we've got to be clear that, you know, from a religious perspective, there's certain things I can't accept and do. So the other... The, <coughs> so the, 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 so the when other, you engage... The person who is wrong... Let me try and see if I get get you right here. So the person you're criticizing is the person who would say, "Oh, and adopt all of their slogans. Oh, it doesn't matter who you fall in love with and all that kind of stuff." Yeah, you say and things like <coughs> equality for all and yeah. like we can't like if the country decides that they want to have same sex marriage, yeah. right? The country can decide that. That's the majority. But as a Muslim, I can't be contributing to that. Assalamualaikum guys, me again, reminding you to head over to islam21c.com forward slash donate to keep the lights on on Islam21c. We pride ourselves on being independent and being funded by the grassroots community. Mom, I Shakir, what about a person who, um, you know, like this person, this, this kind of hypothetical person, I'm mentioning names, who's, you know, in order to have a seat at the table, he or she is saying, yeah, Know, accepting all of these things uh, that might be harmful to their dean or you know supporting things that are harmful to our children being taught yeah 
What, what would you say? Yeah. Would you sit and unite with that type of person? Or? See, I think key issue uh, uh, that I was ma- ma- mentioning or, or making was the discussions that we need to have. That in itself is a strategy. Yeah. How that strategy, you know, and you will find in in America this debate is taking place between yeah. the scholars and do arts and how far do you go and what can you do, what can't you do? So I think the discussion. <coughs> Internally needs to happen That's w- w- one key issue The other key issue I think People will differ In terms of What compromising is What we might see As compromising They say You know what I'm not really compromising I'm still keeping My principles and values You know mm. Of course A discussion is needed Is that a compromise or not mm. And of course As long as boundaries Are being observed mm. Then you know We need to be A bit more tolerant Key issue I think is in terms of, uh, I think Dr. Salman mentioned, look, certain groups, it's clear cut. Other side of the fence, they themselves are Islamophobes, whether they call themselves Muslims or not. And they work yeah. for, you know, with the government agenda against Islam yeah. and Muslims and so on. But within our own circles, there are brothers and sisters who might differ in strategy. strategy yeah. What do we do? <coughs> social media generation, just, people are calling each other out on social media. This I find look. This is not progression and the way forward. It's this not, is where absolutely yeah. not. I think you're you're right, but mm. then it, uh, it goes back to my point, which is what is our primary duty as Muslims? Mm-hmm. Okay, if our primary duty uh, is to carry the message, that is our primary duty, and then to seek the pleasure yeah. of Allah. That's 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 it. There's nothing more. Everything we do has to be governed by that. We should, as a Muslim, never be in a position where we're that desperate. That we're that desperate that we we forget the being reliant on Allah. Right? Yeah. We're that desperate that we would do certain mm-hmm. things that but so as a, mitigate. You know what they're doing? They let's say it's a seat on the table. The intention is to protect Islam. That's what I'm saying. It's a bit more. The, the intention how? is to kind of like so, further Islam. Okay, so how? Mm-hmm. So for example, okay, we've had what <coughs> since nine uh, eleven, we've had nearly twenty years of the war on terror. Yeah, mm-hmm. we've had. Uh, various uh, violent incidents that have taken place okay and we've had a chorus of organizations individuals that come out and condemned it it had nothing to do with them but they condemned it why did they condemn it because they would say to protect muslims to let the non-muslims know it's got nothing to do with us who asked the question do the non-muslims actually think that or is it the media that thinks that the right wing neocons that think that that are trying to that got you into this rabbit hole in the first place but anyway, look, I agree with mm, you, mm. is to protect Muslims. So 20 years later, <coughs> all that condemnation, has it protected Muslims? No. Why? How do you know this? So well, what Islamophobia is you're, has yeah, increased. But what you, what it's it, got worse. But uh, for argument's sake, to play devil's advocate here, I agree with you, by the way. He doesn't need an advocate, here. by the way. <laughs> <laughs> to play devil's advocate, you're disagreeing with their strategy. And I'm not disagreeing with the strategy only. I'm saying the strategy is harmful. Yeah. I'm saying the strategy is disempowering. But at the same time, I'm saying can you come young together? People, young people, when they see this, yeah. right, they, they I agree with you, I agree d- disengage. With you. But I think that what Imam Shkiel is saying yeah. is you have to be, you have to have some kind of com- connection with those people to, no, to no, articulate I, I ha- your. I have connections with all of these people. Your, um, and your, I've your, discussed your it. To I've discussed it with people. And like Imam Shkiel mm-hmm. says, people see things differently. And that's fine. Mm-hmm. Um, but. Um, my strategy is that you know I carry on speaking mm. this strategy, and 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 from my experience, it resonates more with the younger people. Mm-hmm. Um, that you know, if 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 we get a be- like younger labour voters, <laughs> <coughs> they're, they're not, not necessarily. <laughs> if you if you get to a, a point where more people actually understand that, then yeah. you you will start making real changes. Mm-hmm. But it's not. Look, I, I go back to my earlier point. We're a young community. Yeah. We've had these discussions maybe 20, 30 years in our own community. That's a short time, yeah. really, thinking about it. It's a short time. So it needs time for people to move over. And I think many people are seeing that, you know, look, you don't have to uh, be dictated to by media. You don't have to be dictated to by what the power wants. If, for example, I think that the current government is oppressing Muslims, that is bad and everything else. Like, you know, let's just give an example. Yeah. If I think Boris Johnson is an Islamophobe and he called my sisters letterboxes and, you know, bank robbers and everything else, and I was offended by mm-hmm. that, why would I write congratulations, <coughs> Boris Johnson, and welcome you? Like, what, what's this schizophrenia that, that I have? 
Or is it actually an example some, of... Shouldn't there be some organisations representing Muslims that even however, however you know, distasteful, however tough the job is, to have a neutral stance in some... You know, no, no, uh, no, you, you, you mis- mis- like misunderstood any, any, that that what I said. I said, if you believe yeah. Boris Johnson is an Islamophobe and that he was harmful... If you hate his guts. No, 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 not yeah. hate his guts. If you believe what he said was Islamophobic yeah. and that he, uh, uh, the words he uttered was, uh, you know, that they yeah, hurt yeah, you, yeah. they were Islamophobic, they called your sisters this. Harmful. Kind of if you believe that, yeah. and that and it's harmful, why would you then congratulate him? I'm just saying, for argument's sake. No, you, no, you can't, because uh, you're the it, person. It you're not neutral. What your position is doesn't matter. Me as what a your person, position me doesn't as a matter. Person, no, this is. Am I, uh, and that's a fal- I would that, and That's the fallacy. There is mm. no, there is no convention that says to you, find it. Sheikh is here. Find mm. it in our deen. There is no convention, convention or sunnah that says to in our deen that when an oppressor does all of these oppressive things, that you pat him on the back <laughs> and you welcome him. Congratulations. There yeah, is, I mean, there yeah, is yeah, a true, but no. If but it's true, I'm let's is, not say yeah, but. You can't I'm say saying, true I'm and but. Saying that, you're, what, I know you're your saying, <laughs> what you're saying is, <laughs> what you're saying is just diplomacy, right? And even for evil people, wow. the Prophet Sallallahu doesn't mean even the Prophet Sallallahu would refer to people with with honor, honorific with, with titles, their titles and so forth. With their titles, right? right? That's a, there's a difference between referring to someone with their title and. Mm. And, and doing what I've just said. There's a very big mm. difference. So that's okay. just going back So to if you wanted to address the Prime Minister of this country, you would say, uh, you either say, Dear Prime Minister, or you say, The Right Honourable Prime Minister. You, you would about, add this to uh, I don't about, have a problem with that. What about leading by your own, you know, with, without being reactive or whatever, like, as you're saying, leading mm. with your own agenda and, you know, opening up a channel or extending an olive branch and that kind of stuff? Yeah, you have, you have to engage. You have to engage, Akhi. And I'm doing saying so that. you're congratulating the guy. No, for you, don't. <laughs> you don't. You don't. You don't. I've seen people. Just, for argument, just to <laughs> disclaim, I've never congratulated him or anything. I'm just kind of, you know, trying to <laughs> play devil's, uh, devil's advocate. Devil's advocate. I'm but not calling them devils, <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> In terms of, you know, youngsters, and we're, we're looking ahead, we're trying to be posit- positive and so on. So let's say it's a uh, difference in strategy, that's fine. But debates and discussions, refutations are taking place on a public level. Yeah. What kind of empowerment does it give youngsters? I'll give you an example. I think I had something yeah. maybe last week uh, after the election, uh, Friday or Saturday. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and she said, look, we need to now don't yeah. put all our eggs yeah. in one basket labor. Mm. You know, we seem to be engaged with the Tories, mm. with the conservatives. Mm. And there was kind of like back and forth. That's I, no, it was a little bit more than that. I think what she said is like we've not done enough. Mm-hmm. I think the, yeah. the, this is this is a really important point. You, which uh, mm. you know, I'll, I'll use the phrase "stay in your lane," uh, mm-hmm. uh, which is, and, and I'm not referring to sister. <laughs> just let me make that clear <laughs> first. I'm saying that, and, and mashallah to her credit, she she mm. uh, uh, took on the uh, uh, advice and then mm-hmm. deleted the tweet. The thing is, she said, like, Muslims have not done enough to engage uh, uh, the conservatives, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, which is not true at all. You know, you, you have uh, a conservative forum of Muslims, and, and, and you have many Muslims in the conservative party. You had many Muslims mm. that stood uh, for conservative uh, seats, uh, sorry, uh, for parliamentary seats. So, and a few of them is, uh, a few of the new. Uh, this is a mm. different question. The question is, like, do you put all your eggs in one basket? The answer is, no, you don't. Right? What you do is you have your own position first. Mm. Then you know what to do. My What's problem other, is you, Muslims you know, don't have say, their I, own position. I, I agree with you 100%. My point is, it's the way, let's say, you know, people reacted to her comments, her statement. Let's say it's a mistake, or, you know, it's, mm. it's a hijtihad. This is a active sister, a niqabi sister. She's been at the forefront of kind of like, you know, tackling the niqab debate and so on. Mm, mm. Discussions yeah, need to be course. private. But I, this is, this yeah. I think that that is a other problem we have. Yeah. We have a, another problem in our community. So post elections, yeah. unity, discussions, our own engagement. Yeah, that is very, but very I think, crucial. Look, Sheikh, um, we need uh, now is the time to set up the United Kingdom Islamic Party. Um, because okay, the, so UKIP, the UKIP is are, already taken. It's, it's available now. It's <laughs> it's available. Is the head, yeah? With Azad as the head. Azad, <laughs> I could be the head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the so to give uh, sister, <laughs> uh, 
uh, uh, uh, I have a lot of time and respect for her. And, mm. and to give her uh, her due respect, she also said in her second tweet after she deleted it that putting statements like that in on social media will attract certain things. You've yeah. got to understand, those people who actually use social media with their own real name and face and things like that, yeah. they, they don't really behave in that way. But you have a lot of people that <coughs> use acronyms, whatever, trolls. kind of trolls, yeah. So th you will have that. Mm -hmm. So I think we shouldn't use... Abu MI5. I would never joke. use... Yeah, I would never use <laughs> a social media as a yardstick to measure anything. That's mm -hmm. the first thing. Second thing is, I think you're right, though. We still have a genuine power problem. trolls. It's you empower you trolls, but it we... It's important you don't empower trolls yeah. by... Yeah, responding um, to them or even attacking yeah. uh, attacking people we disagree yeah. with the strategy on. Yeah, I think that's, the, the, that's the point. Yeah, yeah no, so I, but so yeah, so this is mm. the reality. We have people who are who have yet to manage sit, you know, together and disagree and come mm. away as brothers. Mm. I think that, look, that that's where we need to get to. Yeah. But I think it's better than it used to be. If I if I look back ten years ago on these certain issues, like say saying elections, I, th I think it's worse, Sahi. Honestly, do you think about yeah. voting? Because look, not not voting. No, no, I'm just using that as an example. Uh, if things if, were if, private. People would differ privately. No. Set advice, at, you know, public now too. Um, and I'm, I'm I think it's more. And now, once you put something out publicly, it's much harder to. Even if you realize you made a mistake, it's much harder that's, to. That's more um, to do with social media. Now. That's mm -hmm. more to do with. And that's where the the, that's, that's where probably ninety no, percent of our communication no, happens. Back in back in say like say two thousand or even in the nineties, if you like, when people did say and do things, it still did get viral <coughs> in, when I in was its a kid own in way. Primary school. Yeah. yeah? <laughs> just putting it out there yeah so i, I was fine no myself as well um <laughs> and i was active there you go but no um so i think i think the time changes but i think the problem is still there you're right but i i think it has improved i think people are uh, a lot more uh accommodating and, and willing to listen but mm -hmm. also we've got to understand this phenomena isn't going to change entirely why when you're young you're always going to be in a black and white kind of scenario Mm -hmm. Most mm -hmm. most people when they're young things are black and white. Mm -hmm. Akhi, it's halal or haram. What are you going on about? Mm -hmm. Right? It's, it's usually like this. Mm -hmm. But once people engage in society, they get a job, they get married, you know, they mature. They become a bit, bit more right wing. Then then they realize <laughs> that actually, you know what? There's a lot of grey in this world. Yeah. Yeah. Mamshki, what yeah. what makes you say that it's getting worse? What 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 kind of? Because um, I noticed you're not actually on social media yourself. Yeah, Unless you're using a an anonymous account, <laughs> there's a secret account there isn't there? <laughs> to kind of monitor Abu, the community. Abu, 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 Abu Jihad yeah, had been yeah. MI5. <laughs> what a name! What though. makes you think you know it's uh, it's going? Well, what are you basing that on? In terms of, I mean, look, the sometimes the responses, worse. the responses. It's not from it's senior brothers and sisters, yeah. brothers who are not young. Mm. They've been in the Dawah. They've been active. You know, uh, they're, they're activists. They have a sense of yeah. understanding and knowledge of Islam. That's why, you know, if it was just from youngsters, so you can understand, fine. Mm. But when it's coming from... So the, you know, what do you think, they're being rude in there, you know, refuting I think, people I publicly? Think yes, yes, so. the response is, it's kind of like... Uh, to be honest, I, I've, not, I've not seen, I, I've not followed it. I, mm. I, I've only seen the sister's uh, mm. original tweet and then her mm. second tweet. Mm. Um, if there are people like that, then, you know, that's, that's yeah, a character yeah. trait. Unfortunately, yeah. that's a character trait. And but you know, look, I don't want to excuse their behavior. I don't mm. want to excuse uh, yeah. the sister's behavior. Mm. But it's not about that. It's about we we, we can't we, we shouldn't get ourselves worked up about this detail because mm. this detail is something that it will take a long time mm. to to settle mm. because mm. it's how humans interact with each other. That's mm. what it is. Is a bigger thing. But, but if what I want po to get post election, so as a post election with the challenges that we are. Mm. Have been facing, will be facing. Can we afford to turn on each other? This, We've not this, turned this, on this each other. I don't believe that for a second. Mm -hmm. I think, look, uh, if anyone, I would say most of the people who disagreed with uh, that that I don't particular position this about one yeah, take no, probably no, 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 disagreed with that anyway. position uh, <laughs> would never uh, would be the first to be mm -hmm. there to defend her. Mm -hmm. um, I, I I don't think it's about that. I mm. I genuinely feel mm -hmm. as a community we have. We, we do have more uh, in common than uh, not. I don't like to use the word unity because I think it's people misunderstand that because they, they think we're going to become one Jamaa or something and have one Amir and, and all of that kind of stuff. And, and we're very, uh, very, very far away from, from that before you say anything you can to do with <laughs> Hamza Zortus. <laughs> what do you say? Um, but I think 
if we need to work on those things more. So oh, for example, if you, if you, yeah, there you go. It's a bit slow, Salman, <laughs> but he'll get there. Um, if you if you look at the, just the issue of Islamophobia, mm -hmm. there's a huge unity on amongst the people who disagree on strategy, come from different methodology that yeah. this is actually a problem and it needs mm -hmm. to be dealt with. Mm -hmm. See, if you look at uh, another issue so it's to do with prevent, there's a lot of people that disagree with you, but they all agree <coughs> this is a harmful policy. Yeah. So I, I see actually a lot of positivity in our community uh, in, in that. And that's what, as people that are in, uh, unfortunately, in those leading roles mm -hmm. that are public, what we have to do is we have to uh, make sure that we we play to that strength. Mm -hmm. That we talk about issues, not individualize it, not mm -hmm. make it personal. You know, and and give if there is uh, advice needed, give it in a way that will bring people to the uh, the main issue. Mm -hmm. So, what main point is, is as a community, have we done enough to interact with uh, the different political entities, or are we just blinded uh, and blindly following one particular party? That's a very good question she's asking mm -hmm. yeah. and it's one that needs to be understood and it's one that needs to be explored because i would say sometimes as muslims we are mm -hmm. yeah. we just like you know give our blank check to one particular party um, but this party is also harmful why if you look at all of the counterterrorism legislation that's mm -hmm. come in it was brought in by this law mm -hmm. which is uh, which is labor if you recall under labor they wanted to increase pre-charge detention to 90 days three months they wanted to do that. It was the Tories that fought them. Did prevent start with the Labour? Yeah. Of course. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, prevent, uh, schedule seven, all of these things came yeah. with that. So, you know, we got to, we, we can't. That's but to why be I fair, that, to wasn't, that wasn't Jez's Labour. It doesn't matter <laughs> whose <laughs> Labour it is. One man does not make a party. It's we got to understand that. Obviously, there's been a Obama lot of changes. Obama said before the election, as soon as I get in, I'm going to close, I'm going to close Guantanamo Bay. I'm mm. going to close Guantanamo Bay in 100 days. Did he close Guantanamo mm. Bay? No, he didn't, right? Mm. So let's not believe, you know, that one person can do anything. Jeremy Corbyn is, is, is a very decent guy and I have a lot of time for him. And, and, and history has shown he's always been on yeah. the right side of the argument, okay? But he's not the Labour Party. Mm -hmm. He's just one man and we've got to understand that. Yeah. So I think the question uh, th that is being asked, we need to explore that. And it brings me back to my point. If you don't know what you want to do, you're always going to get played by all of these parties because they mm. will say something that you like. Mm. They will say something that you like and yeah. you'll get drawn to it. But if you know what you need and what you want, then you won't get played. You need to easily. have your own narrative. And that's what this we're all about. Yeah. Islam20c.com forward slash donate. Uh, <laughs> I want to get back to the, the, uh, an, an empowering message, right? What is, what, is our, what is your vision? What is your kind of plea and call to the Muslims to focus on now because we had a big campaign to get Muslims to wake up and you know take elections seriously. Now elections are over. We don't want them to go back to sleep. But what do you want to use to continue that momentum now? Mm. Um, Shigir, what's your? I, th I think the first first um, thing is those people that um, actively promoted engaging, yeah. registering. Uh, participating in everything else, they need to take the lead in this. That's the number one thing. So those, I will look to those organizations for the lead. That's the first thing. The second thing is, I think, look, as a community, um, you know, the hadith that, you know, the end of the world comes uh, and, and someone is planting a seed and, and it's recommended that he finishes planting it. This is the attitude <coughs> as Muslims we need to have. Yes, we're going to probably... It's not bleak at all. Let me just <laughs> decide to hadith about the end of the world. <laughs> yeah, this is probably, for some people, it feels like a really, really bad thing. But, yeah. you know, subhanAllah, there's far worse things happening in the world. Absolutely. Right? So let's, yeah. let's put things into perspective and let's remember who we are. We are people, we are not people who are hopeless. We are bring people who bring hope, mm. right? But you can't bring hope if you yourself are hopeless. So we've got to go back to that. So I think as a community... We've got to primarily remember that, you know, we have a particular uh, focus and we need to do that. Second, what, what's a pr practically, terms, what do you practically, advise? I think, you know, people need to put investment into having think tanks and things like that. We need mm -hmm. to invest in infrastructure in this country. Mashallah, we, we are one of the, the most generous community in this country. Yeah. Last Ramadan, I think we raised over 100 million pounds. That's in 30 days. Mm -hmm. Subhanallah. That's, that's fantastic. Right? But some of that money now needs to be invested here. We need to invest in institutions, into organizations that will do this stuff for us. That will mm -hmm. tell us, okay, you know what? This is, this is our position. This is where we are. 
and then can do that. If you have a few uh, that are doing that long term, not just when it's an election, but long term, and then you're going out engaging people in, in, in the Jumma khutbas and everything else, you're talking about <coughs> these things, mm-hmm. okay? In your articles, in your engagement, in your da'wah programs, mm-hmm. in your conferences and everything else, you're, you're normalizing this. Mm-hmm. Um, then, it, because look, if you exceptionalize it, because at the moment, you know, you're talking about bubbles. At the moment, yeah. you have an election bubble, don't you? When yeah. it's election, everyone's, there's a frenzy. And then it's gone, it's something else is a frenzy. Oh, so we react you, to things like the yeah. SRE thing, we have a big campaign. Yeah. Islamophobia, we have campaigns about that. But it seems like we're reacting. You're yeah, saying that you need, to, you need to have so a So you need to have a, a proactive strategy. And you need to engage the institutions of power, yeah. which isn't the political parties, okay? though they are part of it. There are other institutions of power we mm. need to understand. We need to know how to engage. We need to know how to lobby. Okay, it's, yeah. it's like most of the things that people getting, like if you look at the business lobby, if you look at the uh, uh, media lobby, mm. if you look at the uh, um, uh, Israeli lobby, you know, there's so many different or the gay and if lobby. If you look at the Islamic lobby, there isn't. <laughs> I, I stop there. There isn't, right? So. That's what you need to understand that there is more ways than one uh, yeah. to do this, and I think you know. But a lot of people say that practically. How do you? How do you? I mean, if you're an active Muslim now, you're in your local mosque, you're Imam, you're thinking about, you know, um, you, you got you, 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 you can't you can't generalize it. Look, th- I've given you some general things, yeah. but then locally, like for example, if I'm in a council, in this council they're introducing things that are like problematic for me, um, so I have to first. Do a proper analysis of that. Is it just problematic to me, or is it problematic for my community here? Mm-hmm. Okay, which is it? If it's just me, then what can I do? Why is mm-hmm. it problematic to me? And then I need to look at okay, what are the avenues that I need to engage in? Mm-hmm. Who's doing that thinking? There isn't. So if something happens. We see, like this mm-hmm. is you know we're we're like I said immature as a community. We see something on social media, right? And then we're all reacting to that. Yeah. Oh my God, we got to do something, and everyone's reacting to that. No one's actually investigated actually what happened and everything else, and then understood mm-hmm. it properly. So that's what I'm saying. So that these things need to happen. Yeah. It needs to happen local level and national level. Assalamualaikum, guys. Last reminder, I promise. Head over to islam21c.com forward slash donate to help this movement get to the next level. So we have genuine, high quality media articulating Islam in the 21st century and developing confident Muslims impacting the world for the better. Yes, of course. Mam Shakir, one yeah. of the one of the things that Masha not to praise in front of your face, but the, the things that um, Lewisham is is known for is that there's a lot of um, I don't want to say integration in the bad sense, but the well, there's Muslims, nothing wrong with integration. Yeah, the Muslims assimilation are, we don't yeah, like. The Muslims are very well established in in that area. They're very active politically, socially, uh, in terms of dawah as well. What are some of the things that you know you can that we can learn from Lewisham? To, mm. to spread as a good case study for the stuff that Azad yeah. Bai is saying, you know, in terms of I think, look, engaging. Uh, not Lucia, but uh, as Azad mentioned, Islam, Sunnah, yeah. you know, our Islamic teachings. Uh, I think I- enough is there from the Prophet for Islam. us to kind of like look at and apply in society. And I think mindset is crucial. You know, the Messenger of Allah while yeah. in the, you know, the, the early stages of Mecca, the you know the difficulties he was going through. What message was he giving his companions? Even when he sallallahu alaihi wasallam made his hijrah, his migration, mm-hmm. and you know Suraka mm-hmm. Numari comes to him. What does he say? He says, "Okay, for ida labista siwari kisra Suraka, you know, relax, chill, don't worry, because a time will come. He's not even a Muslim. Mm-hmm. You will be a Muslim, and you will have the braces of kisra." Mm-hmm. Yeah, so as I mentioned, Surah ibn Malik, in terms of, you know, the Prophet said to him, he's, tr- he's trying to kidnap the Messenger of Allah, capture the Prophet He said, how will it be Suraka when you have the bracelets of Kisra? You know, a time will come, this will happen. The, 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 the Prophet mm-hmm. being positive Optimism. and yeah, and being optimistic. Uh, Lush, just the Shahadas, mm-hmm. and this is not exaggeration. And that gives me so much hope, Allahi, on a weekly basis. You see the media, elections. I mean, this Saturday, it's a young lady coming to take a shahada. Every week, and you say, look, with all the negativity, what is making people to what, turn towards Islam? Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. That's it. You know, so that kind of like is inspiring for me. I mean, look, uh, mm. last Saturday, it was Saturday before, Anthony Joshua. Mm-hmm. Does yeah, he have yeah. to say Bismillah? Exactly. Does he have to say MashaAllah? <laughs> yeah. Does he have to say my uncles went to Mecca and made uh, dua, dua for me? me. Yeah, yeah. 
coming on this way or speaking to a professional boxer. Mm. Yeah, he's got he's you know like a fight coming. He's a non-Muslim. Salam alaikum, mm. walaikum salam. How are you, brother? Mm. Look, Islam is made. So is it because the Muslim, the, the the everyday Muslim is carrying out dawa, the dawa duties, or do you think it's more needs to be done? But mm. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is making mm. Islam get into the hearts of people. Mm. If we make a bit of effort, dawa, positivity, unity, exactly. hard work, Islam yeah. will be yeah. Yeah. strong in I this mean, environment. Look, yeah. the, the, I mean, I travel a, a lot across the country, um, and I see so much positively, like you said. Many non-Muslims they don't have the views that the media projects, you know, and and that's why I'm saying as Muslims we need to be confident. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't need to fall for these traps of you know this expectation that we need to distance ourselves from, mm-hmm. you know, an act that's not even got anything to do with us. You know, we've got to understand these kind of games and these are lessons that are learned from history. You will find this in the black civil rights movement. Okay, you will mm-hmm. find all of these lessons and we've got to make sure that we don't fall into that. But we remain confident and we rely on Allah. You know, mm-hmm. after so <coughs> many major incidences, whether it's 9-11, whether it's 7-7, whatever it is, there's still loads of people taking shahada. Why? Mm. Because people actually are reading Islam. So what we as a community have to do is make sure we're giving the best examples of Islam in our daily lives. As long as we're living, you know, that's the best that we can do, to be honest, right? Mm-hmm. You know, th- there are some people who need to do specifically and work together, but the best that we can do is be the, the, that. So number one thing to focus on is that one. Number two, in terms of our other obligations in, in, uh, in society, what would, you, what would you say to that? I mean, from I think, look, uh, you know, we, our unity that's crucial. Unity. Our hard work, as uh, as I mentioned, whether mm. it's kind of like you know lobbying, uh, other levels of engagement, that needs to be there. Uh, you know, Allah Taala in the Quran when He speaks about the munafiqun, what does He say? Munafiqun wal munafiqat ba'dum min ba'd. They're from one another. Oh, then yeah. they command the, uh, the, 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 the 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 forbid the good, command the evil, and then what does Allah say? Wa yakbiduna idiyahum. They fold their hands. This is like a kinaya to say, look, you know what? They don't do action. Mm. That's hypocrites. Mm. The believers who are the opposite, they work hard. So I think that needs to be done. And also, if we're looking at, you know what? Uh, this is our home. This is our society. Are there issues which affect us and others? NHS, issues that affect us and others. Mm. Homelessness, mm. housing, poverty, food banks, food, That's you know, uh, soup mm-hmm. kitchens. Be a part The Prophet Sallallahu Even before Nubuwa He took part in Hilf al mm. With You know p- People uh, in, in Makkah When he became mm-hmm. a messenger mm-hmm. He said look If they call me towards this I will do it Because why He was part of Meccan society mm-hmm. So That with everything else uh, Inshallah I think there's, there's What's your th- message To maybe a, a young person uh, Reading uh, Listening to this They don't have a position In the masjid Or local community mm-hmm. How do they go about fulfilling that eagerness that they want to see some positive change around them? I think uh, as I hit it on the head when he said, look, dawah is not you telling people, look, become a Muslim. Live your mm. Islam. That's mm. the greatest way of people seeing what Islam is really about. Mm-hmm. Be the change you want mm-hmm. others t- t- to be in yeah. society. Yeah. Be the change Absolutely. you want society to be. And if you live by that, the Prophet's way, okay, inshallah. Uh, Sheikh, uh, I mean, you... Obviously, take a lot of uh, shahadas and everything else. I and mean, when you speak to the, the, the people who are taking shahadas, uh, do you get a sense of like you know what motivated them? Because I, I mean, here also in East London Mosque as well, we have a, a lot of people taking shahadas on a weekly basis. And in the new Muslim circles, uh, one of the common themes that comes across is that you know I saw this person and his behavior or her behavior. Hey. <laughs> Inshallah, you as well. But you Point know their their actually. behavior, the way they were, the the you know they were really nice and all of that. This is what inspired me. Is that is that a sense that you get as well? Yeah, yeah. And in terms of you know, sometimes I have to hold back my tears mm. because look, in front of me is a girl. She's seventeen, sixteen, eighteen, nineteen. I'm thinking, what's bringing you to, towards this? Mm. You know, different ethnicities, but like you said, they've got a friend who's a Muslim. Yeah. yeah, they've come across a, a Muslim. <coughs> they've got a cousin who's a who's a Muslim. You know, the father maybe took shahada before, has, and now kind of like um, had an impact yeah. on her or him, and mm-hmm. so on. All of those are factors. At the same exactly. time, people yeah. are also looking at values. Yes, right. They're looking at what's the way society is going. Allah, you know, Allah. male mm-hmm. female values. interaction, family values. They're looking at Islam and say, wait, wait a minute, these are 
you know the way a woman is supposed to be treated, a man is supposed to be treated. Mm. Resonates with the fitrah. Resonates, oh, resonates this, with this with issue the of values is yeah. what puts us apart yeah. from everyone else. And if we do not a maintain them and b mm. exemplify them, then we we've totally failed. Uh, and mm. I, that's my view. Okay, so just yeah, one more thing I want to add is is and, and I'm, I actually do worry about this is that we as Muslims should not live in the social media world. Please, whatever you do, no. What what I mean by that is, look, you cannot you cannot forsake the reality. The people that are there uh, for uh, messaging and doing stuff on social media and and mm. and I don't know having a million followers it it doesn't make much difference. Engage in the real world. I think this is really really important mm. because I think there is a trend uh, towards that you know let's do everything online uh, and and that human interaction, as uh, Imam Shakil yeah. mentioned, is is <coughs> is perhaps the one of the biggest reasons why people mm. are uh, accepting. Of, of the knowledge of Islam It reminds me of some of so many ahadith Where the Prophet ﷺ just rubbed a person's uh, A young person's chest Or put his, and grabbed a, a young sahabi And said you know yeah. something to him And, and they recalled that They said yeah, you know, the yeah. Prophet yeah. ﷺ He was you know, with me on the camel Or you know he, yeah. he grabbed me and he, no, or, he, or he It's the story his, of the old woman You knees. know when the Prophet ﷺ Helps uh, carry her stuff yeah. and, and she's like you know Attacking him uh, yeah. But you know it was so nice, and at the end, when she told the it, Darwin Wounds be song. Yeah, yeah, here you go. <laughs> when, when she found out who she was, she just took the shahada. Yeah, it was before your time, how do you remember that? <laughs> yeah, it wasn't five then. <laughs> uh, I saw it in a museum. You know, in terms of the, there's a young companion, Abdullah bin Harith, and in, in, in uh, Tirmidhi narrates this. He said, I never saw Mara itu ahadan akthar tabasuman min Rasulillah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. I never saw anyone more smiling than the Messenger mm-hmm. of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That, <coughs> you, you know, give. It's a dean of positivity yeah, yeah. So not only are you positive You're going to give those vibes to others And I think a key thing here mm. is Muslims need to be leaders mm. If you, you mention something about youngsters Okay, youngsters mm. in school Be the leader mm. University, be the leader Islamic society, set it up mm. Be the leader mm. uh, Community groups, be the leader Take the, the, the initiative to be leader And leaders in your community And I just want to say Leaders are not people just with titles Mm. The, the, the leaders are just by example you know if you, yeah. you, you, you know practical things that young people can do in their own area see first of all obviously you know just be be muslim and and yeah. and, and and let people see it yeah. but see what the gap is in your area what is the the, the gap mm. sometimes it's social change that's needed sometimes yeah. it's economical uh, issues and sometimes it'd be political issues mm. but you need to work from localized to national yeah. unfortunately we, we, we're always too focused on, on national level and we, forgetting want, the we local. want the massive change to happen but we can we can make it you know the sphere of influence and the severe of sphere of concern think global you act can, local yeah. that was you, the catchphrase you, you mentioned the the brother that you know for five years been doing the soup kitchen yeah and you, not you, five like 15, 15 years 15 years, 15 okay, years. You know, privately and and yeah and what did the you know the person he said khadim al qawm yeah. mm. the one who serves the people that is that he's that's leadership that's he, he's a yeah. leader yeah, yeah. Th- that's yeah. what we need exactly yeah, yeah. So th- I'm keen to get practical examples for our viewers. You mentioned the soup kitchen, and, and you, you know, in mine well, work uh, everywhere. Like if you live in a rich place, you won't find anyone. You I know, think hungry. I think look, there's, but, you know, what there's certain some, some practical things that certain w- things. I would say first of all, um, like practically, uh, it depends on where you are and who yeah. you are, right? But the first, I'll give a, a a list if you like. The first thing is, your dean has to be the number one. Your your moral compass has to be your dean. Mm-hmm. So you know we talk about values and things like that. Okay, everything that you do has to come from there. Okay. Second thing is, you need to know yourself. Okay, what is it that you can contribute? What are you good at? What what, what is natural to you? It's like you know you you mm-hmm. don't want to like you said water a, a mango tree and expect bananas, right? You don't want to mm-hmm. put a square peg in a round hole. So you have to know yourself, your your own strength, mm-hmm. and then work from local upwards. So for example. In some areas, okay, the, uh, especially in the northern towns and things like that, uh, there's there's a lot of uh, food banks, uh, a lot of people on poverty lines and, and, and things like that. A lot of people need help in that area. So it might be that you're, you as a person are someone maybe uh, Allah has blessed with wealth. Yeah. Okay, so what you can do is help maybe stock up the local f- food bank or something like that. That is your mm-hmm. contribution. Mm-hmm. You don't need to announce that to everyone, but that is your contribution. Or you may be in a position where actually you can affect policy. 
that you you're you're sitting in an area where policy makers are, are regularly uh, it might be a councillor or something yeah so mm. there you need to look at okay how, how can i affect a policy that will be beneficial for that community yeah so you, you, it's, it's hard to give one thing and yeah. i don't want to give one thing but i want to give an, a, a template so the template has to be your dean uh, the moral mm. values what you're good at and then what's missing mm. fill in the gap i think that point what you're good at because sometimes yeah. Muslim community wants everybody to do one thing. Yeah. Everybody's different, different character, different characteristics, different kind of natural inclinations and so on. And even the Sahaba, the companions of the Prophet, so what do you see? Abu Bakr is different, Umar is different, Uthman yeah. is different, Ali is different. <coughs> Abu has got his you know, uh, speciality, Abu yeah. Abbas got his speciality and so exactly. on. So realizing that with the Muslim community, some will do soup kitchens, mm. some will engage with counselors, some will be kind of like activists, mm. yeah, appreciating the different skills mm. and at the same time going back to that initial yeah. point of I think part community of the engagement. Two more part, qualities part, to part, add from yeah. the three I gave. The, the fourth is to have um, a, a broad uh, heart so you need you can tolerate other people doing other things. Mm. You, we have this um, uh, almost uh, naturally. You you think that the thing you're focused on is something is the most important be, yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we have this thing that you know what I'm doing is the mm. most important thing, and, and we have to realize it's yeah. not. It's it's a hard thing, but we have to realize it's it's probably not. Yeah. So if someone else is doing something else, let them do that. But you know, work collectively. Have enough room in your heart for everyone mm. in, the, in that sense. Especially your fellow Muslim brother, right? And the fourth thing is, uh, the five, fifth thing, final thing is, you have to yeah, you have to you have to be patient. The results mm. does not come from you. We have too many people who think they are the heroes. Mm. Right? As soon as and, I, and this is the advice I'd give to everyone that's listening. Right? If you see a hero, someone who's coming at you as a hero, avoid him or her. That is nothing but destruction, okay? Because yeah. you do not bring anything. You got to do all the right things. Let it, let it come from Allah. It's problematic because of the way we're taught history as well. We're taught that you know Malcolm X did this and this. He did, uh, but he didn't did bring the change. Exactly. The people that actually brought the change were the people you know printing the posters and putting yeah. on the walls and doing the That's actual legwork. Exactly. Salah al-Din, rahimahullah, he didn't liberate. Al Quds by himself. Exactly. It was the, every individual yeah. soldier, the people gathering the wood, yeah. the people making mm. arrows, the people doing mm. the the little jobs. Mm. And, and this is where ikhlas comes in. Yeah, you might be doing that stuff which seems to be little, but Allah knows what you're yeah. doing and how you're taking um, part in. Yeah, yeah. You know, strengthening the ummah and the community and so on. Yeah. So if ikhlas is there, it doesn't matter so, whether you are known there's or a, unknown. There's yeah. a hadith. Some said it's weak, but um, seven people going to jannah because of one arrow. Mm. <laughs> the person who collected the wood. The person who, you know, cut it into pieces, the person who made it into a balanced arrow, the person who loaded the thing, the person who shot it in, you know, so that's the spinal of the soul. Yeah. So they said, some said it's weak, but they, a lot of them, a lot of them, a lot of them used it just to get the lesson. It was very important. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned yeah. five uh, interesting points. What are your, uh, I'm your kind of, okay. if, it would be nice if you put into a, a list like uh, Azad Bhai. But, he's uh, already done it. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever he says. That's cheating. <laughs> anyone, anyone would have, uh, anyone in, knew better, they, if they didn't know better, you'd think that this was scripted, but it's uh, unscripted. unscripted. Totally so made that up on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Heard it live here first. <laughs> I think ikhlas. Ikhlas, ikhlas yeah. is a key. Sincerity. Mm. You know, you're working for the sake of Allah. Rewards are with Allah. Whether you are known, unknown, it doesn't matter. Sidq. With the people, and especially as as I mentioned, mm. the British public, the non-Muslim public, honest public, open-minded, yeah, don't lose that hope in them. Mm. You know, that's mm. that's very very important as well, having that, and also of course, as I mentioned earlier on, uh, a sense of positivity. Mm. The Sunnah of the Prophet Sallam <coughs> remain optimistic, remain uh, positive, and of course, then the hard work comes in. Some of the points that as I mentioned yeah. of engagement of lobbying, I think. Discussions need to take place mm. within Definitely, you know, Muslim yeah. kind of like groups and what is the next stage? What mm. do we need to do? What are the mm. changes in strategy that we need to make and so on? And then and I think those are the key ones, inshallah. I remember what I was going to say now. One of the things that Azad Bai mentioned was about setting up um, think tanks and policy kind of analysis units and that kind of good stuff. I think one of the things that we can all do as a community and one of the reasons why maybe that hasn't been to the level... Um, it should have been perhaps Not necessarily just because of funding Although that is a massive issue and That's because we've been pushing a lot of our young people To go into engineering uh, STEM basically you know, Science, technology, engineering, maths Or you know, ma- traditionally money making jobs But we need to push those with an interest In 
into studying politics, more, politics, politics like sociology, that, yeah. you know, philosophy, even uh, literature. Uh, kind of uh, to be honest, um, we, we did an intern, yeah. intern recruitment, uh, and we had a, a lot of Muslims yeah. um, that you know study politics and everything oh, else yeah. at a very high yeah. level. So I think there there are there now. So now the raw material is there, is there for us to use. Yeah, and I think we need to. I think set up the you know, I don't want. I don't want to. <coughs> underestimate the funding. The reason I say that mm. is like, you know, we have also this Fisa Bidillah mentality, which is okay, but it's not okay if you want to get mm. things done professionally. Do you see? It's like, you mm. know, if, if if we don't pay the Imam enough to do their job, then the Imam has to do another job. Mm. He can't focus on his job. So, you know, the and finance. And also, if you, if you pay peanuts, don't be surprised if you. Get, yeah, okay, I don't even want to say that, elephants. especially after I was talking about the Imam. What would you do that? <laughs> I don't know, Imam, you need to say something. Well, sorry, a fatwa well needs to come. <laughs> <laughs> but he does Uber so in his spare time. Ma- ma- yeah, ma- money, money is, 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 yeah. is, is, is a... I mean, because there it are gives some people the stability yeah. and a focus to Absolutely. do the job. I mean, there are some, um, a lot of Muslim organizations that are doing fine work that we should support with our uh, time, energy, effort and our wealth as well. There even some Muslim think tanks like Claystone, they did a few reports. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, the the funding is difficult, but you know we but, have. But to it's an important point, I think, have to, as uh, a way forward. Them. The mindset of the Muslim concerning yeah. this: so a wedding can cost ten, twenty thousand pounds, and mm-hmm. it's okay to pay. You know, we can have events and pay twenty, thirty thousand. It's okay, and it's food and refreshments. Mm-hmm. But where the benefit <coughs> lies in terms of you know getting youngsters trained, funding mm-hmm. in terms of if we do want to push them towards you know uh, political sciences, yeah. okay, who's going to fund the student yeah. fees? Who's yeah, going to so provide yeah. for uh, you know yeah. t- take care of them? Mm-hmm. So that I think is very important as uh, important as a next stage a to, mindset to kind of like shift. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, um, I'd like to carry on, but uh, the, I mean, we don't realize how uh, how time flies when having fun. I suppose that's a good good sign. Alhamdulillah. Zakhna khairan, Sheikh Imam Sakil and uh, Uncle uh, Ustad uh, Sheikh uh, Azad Ali as well. <laughs> you sure you've not students. forgotten anything? <laughs> Uh, editor of Five Pillars, I mean, uh, Community uh, Engagement uh, Director for CAGE. Uh, no, uh, we're not going to lift that down, am I? <laughs> uh, if you want to uh, see where that joke came from, uh, if you think you know where, put it in the comments and we'll, uh, we'll give a tick or we'll, we'll let you know if you got it right. That's an inside joke for now. Uh, I've been your host, Saman Bhatt. Please, um, uh, if you like this podcast, give it a like and a share and subscribe to uh, podcasts and give us some nice reviews wherever you get them we're on iTunes Google Spotify and all that good stuff um, yeah hope to see you next time Jazakum Allah Khairan Assalamu Alaikum Wa Rahmatullah Wa Alaikum Assalamu Wa Rahmatullah Wa Barakatuh